In this episode, a quick overview of boom poles, suspension systems for shotgun microphones, and wind covers. Specifically in this case, we'll be looking at a K-Tech carbon fiber boom pole and Rycote's modular wind cover system. Now also in this test, we're going to be using a boom pole. In this particular case, I'm using a K-Tech. And in particular, this is the K-Tech KEG150CCR. And what you can see, what's unique about this one, uh, maybe not totally unique, but a differentiating feature, I guess, a couple of them. Number one is uh, this 90 degree XLR output. So what that means is the cable is actually coiled up through the inside of the boom pole itself, which is really nice, because then you don't have a cable wrapped around the outside and you don't have it flapping or banging against the pole and making noise. These, this, this particular brand is actually quite nice. Um, pretty high, you know, higher end. This, this boom pole is about six to seven hundred dollars U.S. It is made in the United States. It is carbon fiber, so it's a little bit lighter, which is a nice feature as well. And uh, they use very nice connectors. So these are Nutrik connectors. Like, uh, let me just show you here. Nutrik, if you're not aware, is a um, pretty much kind of the the standard, the gold standard professional XLR connector company. They make these uh, really high end. No, I don't know about really high end, but they make very, very reliable and good quality connectors. So that's how that works. It has a 5 8 inch stud. I believe it's 5 8 inch up on top, which will connect to the suspension system on almost all of the blimps. They have that same connector. So that's pretty much a standard. And uh, these sections, you can just a matter of you don't want to overdo it, but you just undo it and um, you can tighten it up. This one extends to 12 feet, which is kind of a nice range. It's a, a nice kind of happy medium between lightweight and enough reach for most, most purposes. So just wanted to run through that really quickly. I really like this boom pole so far. I've only used it for a few weeks, but I am going to buy this one because I like it that much. So it seems very sturdy. The only downside, I guess I would say about this is that because it's carbon fiber, you can get some noise from your hands if you're sliding around on that. Um, that's just something, from my point of view, you just need to know and to avoid. Uh, some people wear like white cotton gloves or cotton gloves of some sort to prevent that. But whatever you do, it's something to know. I don't find it to be an annoyance and I haven't found that it's uh, introducing a lot of noise to my recordings because I know that and I just don't let my hands slip on it. So it works pretty well. Now, when you're recording outdoors with a shotgun microphone, one of the big challenges is that if there is any sort of wind, that that wind will blow across the capsule of the microphone and create a lot of unpleasant sound <laughs> in your recording. So now when you first get a shotgun microphone, it will typically come with a foam cover to go over the barrel of the microphone, specifically over the interference tube. But those don't do enough for outdoor use. Those are really, I think, for indoor use to prevent plosives when you get up close to the talent, or if you're just doing a little bit of hand booming and you're moving the mic back and forth, in most cases, that'll help prevent any sort of noise that you might pick up as you kind of whip, and you, and you typically shouldn't whip it too quickly, but whip the microphone back and forth between two different people speaking. So in any case, those are a nice start, but if you're gonna be shooting outdoors where there's gonna be any sort of wind, you're probably gonna want a cover more like a Zeppelin cover, or sometimes it's called a blimp. Um, this is Rycote's offering. It's called the Modular Windshield Kit, and it comes with a few things. Um, just run run through this just quickly here so you can see what to expect in this type of thing. So first of all, there's an XLR connector and that cable is routed up into the inside of the cover here. And you can actually take the cover off, of, obviously, because you, you have to get the microphone in there at some point. Uh, this is this is where this one's a little bit of a challenge and actually most of them that are built like this are a little bit of a challenge. Uh, let's see here take the front off. Okay, so now we have both sides off. Uh, you can see inside right now I have the foam wind cover that came with this particular mic. This is an Asdem uh, SG250, which is sort of a about a $250 shotgun microphone that we're in the process of testing. But you can see it's mounted inside here and then the XLR connector on the back. So this is how this works. You just undo these little screws here and then the entire cover comes off. And here's our shotgun mic mounted in 
what's called the Rycote Lyre system. So this is a suspension system such that when you're booming, hand booming the mic with a hand boom pole, let me just tighten this back up to just sort of illustrate here. The suspension system keeps any sort of movement in the boom pole from transferring to the mic itself. And you can see here, it sort of moves back and forth in that system, something like that. So, so you mount the mic in here and then this creates an airspace around the microphone and the material, there's some material on here, some sort of fine screen type material of some sort. And what that does is when the wind hits it, it diffuses it and there's space between the microphone and the diffusion material here. So it should dissipate before it actually hits the microphone capsule. So that's the main idea. Um, the question is how well does it work? Now, actually there's more than that. <laughs> Let me just put this back together and show you one more thing here. The question is, is how much more effective is something like this relative to something like this? Well, we can do a quick test and show you. And actually, rather than just use this, the kit, the Rycote kit in particular, but all of them, I believe, have a similar type thing. If it's not included in the kit, it is something you can add on. And that is a furry cover that goes on top of the, the cover itself. It looks something like this. And, uh, that actually adds even more diffusion, diffusion effect to the wind before it hits the microphone capsule. So let's just put this back together here and show you what that looks like. And there's a drawstring here. One of the things you want to make sure of, of course, is that when you do pull the drawstring, you do need to tuck this in. And in fact, there's a little sticker on here that made me smile. It says, tuck me in. Uh, you definitely want to tuck that in so that it's not flapping in the wind and banging against anything. And that's really kind of one of the secrets to working out in the wind is you need something that you don't want anything banging against anything else. You don't want any wind moving parts that are going to make noise. So overall, that's what that looks like. So let's do a quick comparison here to see what it sounds like in terms of managing wind with something like this versus something like this, which comes with a mic. And so tell me about a typical parade day. What is involved in putting on a marching show with a marching band? Well, on a parade day, we'll, it'll usually be an early morning because we have to travel. So we'll get up around six and get breakfast and get all our stuff together. And then we'll meet at our high school and get on the buses all together. We travel as a, as a band. And we have our instruments and our uniforms and we have support parents that haul around the water for us because it's really hot and we get thirsty. So we load all that up on the buses and then we drive to our staging site, which is where we get ready and warm up. Now that I am in regular band, I notice that it's really not as, ca as formal because in marching band, we have to like stand up straight and fall into attention and all that. And in regular band, we just kind of sit around on our chairs and like, uh, <laughs> yeah, we're gonna play this next. So You haven't talked about posture in symphonic band yet. No. No. Not at all. All right, so marching band is a little more regimented. Quite. Tell us about your uniforms. Um, our uniforms were made uh, for their professional marching band uniforms, and they're red and white with black stripes with a silver overlay. They're, they're modern looking, but they look really good when we all... Mm -hmm.